Hi, friends. Welcome to Screen Vomit, the only movie podcast. Uh, I am your host, Kayla, and I'm here with my co-host, Colin. Hello. Hello. (laughs) This week, we have a double dipper, and by that, I mean (laughs) two guests, two special guests. First time in history, we've had two guests at once. These guests, when I met them, had a band called Hey Rabbit, and now they have a band called Bringers. Both are rockers, my friends, Paul and Mary Cardona. What up? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Hell yeah, is that your theme song? Is that rocking? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sick. (laughs) Um, Cool. Welcome to the pod, y'all. Thanks. Yeah, welcome. Thanks for asking us. Yeah, thanks for asking us. Yeah, of course. So our guest this week picked our movie, which has been great. We've actually, the last couple of guests have picked the movie, and it's going great um, because we're getting such a wide yeah. range of films here. <laughs> uh, so this week we did the 2016 film Swiss Army Man. Yeah. What What made y'all pick this movie? <laughs> well, I'd like to point out that Paul specifically okay, picked yeah, yeah, this okay. movie. So I can, oh. I, can, I can speak to this question then. Um, so this movie, uh, I mean, this, I'm sure we'll cover it as we mm-hmm. go on, but uh, this movie is very strange. It uh-huh. hit me when I, we saw it in theaters with another couple of friends. And, uh, you know, just watching the whole movie, I, I I was entertained the whole time, but I also didn't know how to feel the whole time. And, yeah, for um, sure. And it left me... It, spoiler alert, I'm going to just talk, start talking about the credits right now. Um, this was the only oh. time that it's this has ever happened to me watching a movie uh the credits hit and i just started laughing for a full on like minute and like maybe 30 <laughs> seconds and i couldn't oh stop oh my god well, I, yeah same i couldn't stop like everyone else had left the theater the theater was kind of <laughs> somber like i think people were trying to absorb it or something oh my god and... i had the literally the same thing yeah. like for me yeah, yeah. what yeah. is that uh, That's probably well, the natural me, reaction to this movie. <laughs> like you're not knowing how to react to something or like what's appropriate or if your reaction is appropriate mm. and then just yeah. like having an outburst. Mm-hmm. Letting it and, fly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mary just hit the theme hey. of the movie. <laughs> hey. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so- quick. App. <laughs> yeah. Now, thank you for listening. This is it. Bye-bye. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, it just never yeah. happened. I've never really had a reaction like that, so that stuck yeah. with me. Yeah. I've had two times in my life that I can recall that I laughed so hard at a part of a movie um, that I embarrassed the person that I was w- at the movie with. <laughs> I, I maybe did the okay. same thing to the people that were around me. Yeah. I, I, I think we all felt those. like it enhanced the movie. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, so y'all saw it together then in yeah. theaters? Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. I also saw this in theaters. Colin, you had not seen this, right? No, I watched it this morning oh my gosh. Uh, with pancakes. Hell yeah. Blueberry pancakes. I was. I'm so excited yeah. to talk about this movie with Colin because I think he's gonna love it. I hope. If I'm we'll wrong, this will be a bad up. Yeah, we'll find um. out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> so in this movie, um, we have it's directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinhart. They before this were music video directors, and they famously directed the music video for "Turn Down for What." Mm. Oh. oh shit, that's a good one. A great music video. So Yeah. Then we have basically three people in this movie. So we got Daniel Radcliffe, we got Paul Dano, very Dan heavy mm-hmm. <laughs> cast. <laughs> um 
Paul Dano, we know from There Will Be Blood, Little Miss Sunshine. Um, then we have Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who played Ramona Flowers and Scott Pilgrim. She was also in Gemini Man, which we did on the pod a while back. No, she's in other good movies. <laughs> her best <laughs> Don't. Her best film credit, Gemini Man. <laughs> no. <laughs> who we all famously know her from her role in that movie. And we, uh. we have to mention the um, composer of the score, uh, Andy Hull from Manchester Orchestra, who also has a mm. cameo in the flick at the very end as the cameraman so Uh there's that little blurb um colin what's our critic scores cricket scores from this looking pretty good uh we got rotten tomatoes it's got a a 71 uh meta cricket is saying 64 i gotta tell you i don't know how i feel about this movie yet so i don't know and then of course google user is 4.4 just a solid definitive. Out of Is that out five? of five? Yeah, out of five. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's how my go- Google user... Mine shows up as a percentage, 86%. Well, I guess that's what a 4.4 would be, huh? You guys, anyone know math <laughs> real quick? Nah. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> All right, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone would, it would be one of y'all three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm the only one who didn't go to college, so... <laughs> <laughs> who needs math in quarantine anyway? <laughs> yeah. True, true. Uh, but yeah, all posy. Yeah, we should jump right into the trailer and get the uh, yeah. thing going. All right, let's watch the dang trailer. You know, I had always hoped that right before I died, my life would flash before my eyes and I would see wonderful things. But as I was hanging up there, I didn't really see much of anything, but I did see you. This is crazy. I thought you were dead. Am I dead? I don't think so. You're talking. You're special. You're special. You're like the multi-purpose tool guy. And that's why I need you to help me get home. You want to go home so you can have love. But you ran away because nobody loves you. Shut up! You can't just say everything that comes into your head. That's bad talking. Oh. Oh! 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 It's moving! What's happening? Manny, I think your wang is guiding us home. It's magic. People don't like other people's farts. Is that why you don't fart in front of me? I just like to do it alone. (laughs) Or hold it in. That's what you're supposed to do. That's so sad. All right, where do we start with this movie? It's an A24 film, and we love A24. So one little fun fact that I had, Paul Dano wanted to be in this movie after he heard a one-sentence synopsis from the directors where they said, they explained this movie as the first fart makes you laugh and the last fart makes you cry. So what a beautiful... (laughs) (laughs) Ooh. What a beautiful summary of this movie. <laughs> That's good. Isn't it? <laughs> That's really, I'd sign on to that. Hell yeah. I mean, that, that could have been on the poster. I wish it was. <laughs> what is yeah. on the poster? I don't even know what the tagline is. I are, think on the poster, it's like, we all need some body to lean on. Aw. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cute, Boo. too. <laughs> Not a fan. <laughs> Not as good as the first fart makes you laugh, the last fart makes you cry, definitely. Yeah. I know, I'll never forget yeah. that I would have seen it in theaters, then. 
<laughs> That's what would have sold me. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's just dri- drive straight into the plot of this film. So, we open up in this movie with Paul Dano's character, whose name is Hank Thompson. And that is, of course, a play on Tom Hanks, who starred in another movie with a um, deserted island. Tom Hankson. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks Jr. Uh, (laughs) So when we open, he is committing suicide. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, they really just they really just want everyone to be fully immersed in the movie from the get go. Yeah, they're just like, here you go. I'll be honest. All it did for me was be. I was just like, yeah, I I get it, man. It's like, yeah, (laughs) look at your face. Look at what you've been through. I thought because I think this guy's stranded. So the movie like, opens. <laughs> the movie opens on a guy committing suicide, and Colin just goes, "Well, relatable." <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Imagine being I get that it. is <laughs> stranded on an island. Uh, check, please. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, I die. <laughs> And if you're just trying to, like, if you've just, he's accepted that, and he's like, I'm not going to make it off this island. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, man. I understand. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> he was really trying to get himself to just feel something, is what it seemed like once he, you know, started talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So what happens? Uh, he's committing suicide when he sees <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe's body wash up on shore. And he is dead, question mark? (laughs) Yeah. Fun fact about Daniel Radcliffe's dead body. um, They made a dummy to use in the film, but Mm -hmm. he insisted on personally doing almost everything. Everything he physically possibly could, Daniel Radcliffe actually did in this movie. So I think that's kind of cool and commendable. He kills it. For lack of yeah. a better yeah. word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And here we go. Uh, probably <laughs> death and flatulence puns going to be through the set, potentially. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. Uh, let's see. Hank goes over and pushes on Daniel Radcliffe, and we get our first toot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big, big old juicy yeah. toot. All of the toots in this movie were real toots contributed by the cast and crew. <laughs> oh. Filming. Oh. So that is extraordinary. It's that, it's that level of detail that keeps me coming back. Yeah. <laughs> huh. That's why we love this movie. I'm just trying to, did, did they line up and they're like, all right. Here's the micro. Or do, do they carry around. Uh, how'd they record all the toots? Probably a lot of them happened during filming. So, like, they'd be like, yo, yo, give me a micro. I feel it coming. Maybe they just they, they, they had, like, a mic that was just on constantly, like a battery powered mic. And they'd be like, yo, yeah. give me the mic. Give me the mic. Yeah. Hell yeah. It is, like, almost all men in the crew and everything so they probably were pretty comfortable like you know how guys are hey look if we're talking guy time they love to hang out and fart let her rip yeah Uh, I like my farts loud my beer's cold and my dinner uh, meat made meat my dinner meat Yeah, all of that. That's good. (laughs) So, yeah, so the toots become a big old thing. And then Paul Dano tries to kill himself again. And, uh... (laughs) Yeah, man. (laughs) Not before... Wait, but uh, not before audibly commenting that's so funny when Daniel Radcliffe starts farting. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, and then he tries to go and kill himself again. And Daniel Radcliffe's over there just farting and farting and farting. (laughs) And that is good comedy. (laughs) Oh, it's great. It's the same gag throughout the movie. And it I love an interrupted serious moment. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And basically right off the bat, too, we get the damn soundtrack in here where... 
Paul Dano's like saying something and whatever he's saying turns into the song and it's like the music in this movie is so like so cool so good <laughs> I uh, I did a little sleuthing on the music and I read that the music was already written before they even started shooting which is apparently very rare oh, what? yeah and uh, so they would actually even be listening to the score as they were like filming some scenes wow which kind of makes sense because, uh, like, yeah, like you were saying, Paul Dano starts kind of making a weird noise and then it segues into a song. I feel like that'd yeah. be hard to do if you weren't, yeah. like, already ready with the music. But yeah, so the whole thing was written, I guess. You're right. I didn't even That's think wild. about, like, the logistics of how they did that. Because you're right. Like, if they didn't have the music already, yeah, how would they have even mm-hmm. done that? <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that rocks. The, yeah, the soundtrack to this movie, I mean, the, I, there aren't a ton of movies where the movie would not be the same movie without the soundtrack that it has, you know? Mm-hmm. And this is a movie that that is so true. Like, it would not be this movie without this <laughs> the music. Oh, uh, like, completely. Adds yeah. such a thing to it, you know? <laughs> so, Paul Dano rides uh, Daniel Radcliffe's body into the damn sunset, uh, propelled yeah. by the toots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can I can I just pose a question before we go any further because so yeah. so we've got we've got this human body that mm-hmm. can now propel another human body across the water and as mm-hmm. we'll see there's a lot there's a lot more that this human body can do. Is this a superhero movie? Ooh. Oh boy. Uh <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh But it's also a romantic comedy. Also yes. But aren't most superhero movies? Yeah. They always have like, like them. a lady or a man that they have to be in love with by the end, right? Right. That's, <laughs> That's yeah. generally true. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm uh, saying, yeah, it's a superhero movie. That's uh, that's the consensus. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm saying no, just to be contrarian. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Kali. I, at this point, I wrote in my notes, like, how do you even read this script and, like, <laughs> a- yeah. envision how to, like, act this movie? Because it's literally so absurd. How? Like <laughs> they dive in. <laughs> they like, certainly they, do. <laughs> they completely inhabit whatever like reality they exist in. So they end up where Paul Dano wakes up on a different island question mark somewhere else, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> and he finds a cork on the ground to plug up old boy's butthole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, because the farting is nonstop at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little excessive. Look, you got to muffle it or something. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this movie is montages, but I don't feel like that's a complaint, whereas normally I would feel like that's a complaint um, yeah. because so much cool stuff happens in the damn montages and everything looks cool, sounds cool, and I'm not mad that it's all montages. And if you're, because at this point, he's still pretty much alone. He's got this, like, farting body with him, but he's still essentially (laughs) alone. So there really wouldn't be much going on. Like, the montage is, like, helpful because otherwise it's just a person alone for hours and hours. That's what Castaway is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we already have that movie. (laughs) And it rocks, right? Castaway rocks. (laughs) Just talking about this movie, like... I mean, I guess we're in context, but <laughs> taking any of this out- outside of context just sounds so, literally so insane. I mean, he is just walking around with this dead farting body. That's it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Literally the whole movie. I love how bonkers that part of it is. <laughs> but, so, but this is why... I really respect like, that. So further into the movie, too, I, I think it's more of a romantic comedy. And this whole opening is. scene is like the meat cute. <laughs> the meat toot, if you will. Ah, oh, damn it, there it is. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, just over time, Daniel Radcliffe's character, Manny is his name, just keeps getting all these, or revealing all these different skills and, you know, becoming his title of movie, Swiss Army Man. Um, so he yeah, just gradually does more and more things that Hank's been missing. Pretty soon after here, 
is where they're in the cave. And he push it. Uh, Hank pushes on Manny's tummy, and the water comes out. So he because he uh-huh. was thirsty. They actually they used practical effects for this movie like as much as possible, and I think you can really tell, and that's part of what makes it so interesting. But. I watched like a behind the scenes thing of when they were doing that scene, like when he mm-hmm. was doing the pushing on tumming and the water coming out. And it was actually Daniel Radcliffe doing it and it did not look comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he's like what? he's like dispensing gallons of water, it looks like. How mm-hmm. like how? They had like this hose thing coming up his side and like wired into his mouth oh yeah and then he was like biting on the hose and then would just open his mouth and they they you know turn on the hose or whatever. oh my god but like the thing is big in his mouth Ugh. so it's like did not look cozy they said the first scene that they shot in this movie was when hank puts a the crutch into his throat when he's becoming yeah. a, like, bow and arrow sort of man. <laughs> um, and they were like, that's the first thing that we did. So it's like, hey, um, welcome to set. Uh, anyway, this guy's going to shove a crutch in your mouth. <laughs> Hope that's cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, my God. I watched, like, a whole bunch of clips about, like, the cast and stuff from this movie. And um, I keep wanting to call him Harry Potter. That's such a crime, and I hate that. Uh, but Daniel Radcliffe... <laughs> took the dummy around onto like morning shows and stuff for promotion for this movie too oh that rules <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i watched one where he was like oh i don't really know what we're gonna do with this thing you know after all this tour is done uh, if anybody wants it and the crowd like went wild and he was like uh Actually, on second thought, y'all y'all are a little too excited to have this like dead body dummy that looks exactly like me. Like, <laughs> he's like, uh, uh, I take that back. I think. <laughs> so yeah, so right around here is where we find out his name too, uh, because Hank is still pushing on his tummy, and so he makes a uh, breathe in, breathe out, Manny sound. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and starts uh, talking. Daniel Radcliffe <laughs> is a damn genius, in my opinion. I mean... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He freaking rocked in this movie. Well, and in a lot of movies. I think he, he gets the same thing as, like, Robert Pattinson does, though, like, where mm. they're so famous for one role that they get kind of, like, written off for anything else, you know? And then they start doing weirder and weirder films. Yeah, that are <laughs> super yeah. cool and good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, why, why the fuck not? <laughs> because they're rich millionaires and, like, can do whatever they want. It doesn't matter. Mm, passion uh, projects. Yeah, and it rocks. He, Dan Reck has been in so many good movies. He also has, like, it seems like he has, like, a thing for movies that make him do weird body horror shit. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> don't talk about horns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk I mean, about it. He did horns. He did that movie Guns Akimbo, where he like has guns nailed to his hands. Ooh. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's on it's on my list, buddy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he loves doing this shit, and he rocks at it. So, and it seemed like the way he was talking about it in all the interviews I watched, he's kind of just like, yeah, I was like, whatever, I'll fall down, I'll do crazy shit to my body, I don't give a fuck, let's do this. Hell yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That rules. Yeah. (laughs) So, we get all these, like, montages of Hank teaching Manny how to live, teaching him what things are, like, as if he has never been alive. (laughs) Yeah. So, like... I mean, yeah, I, he he recreates the everybody poops book inside an old Bible, <laughs> which was by, incredible. By sme- I think he's smearing poop on a Bible. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he did, <laughs> which is fantastic. I mean, how Love do you that? How else do you make art? <laughs> Hell yeah, the beginning of so many great artists. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta use what's available. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we have all the montage of that, and then we get to the porno mag where <laughs> he's teaching Daniel Radcliffe about oh, these are boobies these are butts like <laughs> whatever <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of these scenes are kind of also just like Hank kind of working a lot out for himself 
if that's not yeah. I mean if that's not too obvious I don't know but like oh yeah yeah he, he even when he finds the magazine he looks around he, as he, if like it's something shameful but like there's nobody there to see him ah yeah you're right but he still has that like oh, yeah. internalized shame so much internalized shame for like everything I think yeah I think there's such a big change in his character too once he shaves his face mm. And maybe that's kind of like more metaphorical, like more metaphorical than I thought about. Like he's, you know, becoming more bare, revealing more of himself, mm-hmm. sure. whatever sure. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. That just came to my mind right now. All right, there you go. <laughs> oh Take wow, that quarantine. film genius. <laughs> when we're looking at the porno mag, then. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe goes, something's going wrong with my boobs. They're going crazy. (laughs) (laughs) I love that line. Uh, I'm going to get that tattooed on me. Um, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He has a heartbeat, baby. Heart's back. And guess what else comes back right after this? (laughs) Oh. Hey. Hell yeah. Big old bony in the pants. (laughs) Ay, ay, ay. Everyone is horrified. (laughs) He, they built an electron, an animatronic weenie that <laughs> to go on his pants that was controlled by a joystick. So people, <laughs> people behind the cameras or whatever are moving a joystick <laughs> to make his weenie. Wow! <laughs> Hell yeah! And, and Hank's all Hank's all mortified, screaming, running. And Daniel Radcliffe's like, my body's disgusting. It's horrible. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, That's great. I'm going to get that that tattooed on me. (laughs) (laughs) We all all go and get a Swiss Army Man themed tattoo. (laughs) Just different lines from the movie. (laughs) Ah, It's great. My note says it's moving all around in there like a critter. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's very critter-like. You yeah, feel like it could uh, if... just pop out at any moment and get you. Yeah, uh, this is a side story, but recently, um, me and Goo were on a walk, and I look over at them. They've stopped, and I look at their face, and they have this look of like terror on their face, and then yeah. they start like running around <laughs> in a circle, like shaking their legs, like something is happening. <laughs> And out of the bottom of their pants comes their cell phone. (laughs) Oh, what? (laughs) (laughs) They had a hole in their pocket. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) And so their phone came through the hole and got in their pants. (laughs) And they thought it was a critter. (laughs) They were running around just looking so terrified. I'll tell you, that was incredible. Um, (laughs) So this little joystick bone uh, picks a direction and they realize that it is guiding them. (laughs) Uh Another function of the man. They start following the direction that the little bone is pointing. And by bone, I mean weenie. I hope that's clear. (laughs) (laughs) Chubby. What are the other words? I don't know. It's, it's really not a chubby. It's a little more stiff than that. Robin, Robin um, <laughs> if, I can, if I can interject really quickly, Robin Williams has a monologue in the movie Death to Smoochie where he just rattles off like 18 different names for that in maybe 30 okay. seconds. So if you could just like insert that clip. What are you, blind? It's a cock! It's not what? a rocket, you what sick fuck! This? It's a cock! Randall! Look, get this guy out! The cock and balls! Get him out of here the right dick! Now. It's a big stiffy! Yeah! It's a penis! Penis Maximus! A willy! A weenie! Mr. Jiggle Daddy! Get him out of here! The one-eyed wonder weasel! Don't you see that? Give me in the twins! Rumble Force Ben! He made it! He made this thing! It's made from dildo! <laughs> Make a note. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, so at some point, he sees the picture of Mary Elizabeth Winsett on the phone. And this yeah. is the, the pic of whom we think, uh, probably a former girlfriend of Hank's or something. Mm-hmm. Although the story kind of reveals what happened later. But um, so he's been saving this little phone with that pick on it and uh, 
Daniel Radcliffe sees the pic, and then he's in love too. And now they're both in love. We get a really nice line from uh, Paul da- or from Hank, a nice little red flag line where he says, "Before the internet, every girl was special." And uh, there's like a few of those peppered in where it's yeah. it's just sort of like little head scratchery. Like, wait, what did he just say? Anyway, I think that's around this point where he says that, and so yeah. Oh, yeah. that's back at the when they're looking at the porno mag. Porno. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even looking at the magazine, he's like, "Yeah, you'd like make up a story for each girl." So even in the magazine, he's like projecting his like fantasy onto women. And then like that mm-hmm. line too, it's like he clearly doesn't really know how to like actually interact with women. Yeah, he can only like have a fantasy of like who they are. Um, and yeah, so that line like really hits you wrong because you're just like, oh, okay, like kind of getting into like incel sort of territory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to understand how to be with a woman, he has to then become a woman in this movie. <laughs> as, as one does. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is what we all go through. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Daniel Radcliffe makes Hank dress up as this woman so that it will potentially stir a memory of a time when he was alive. Maybe he remembers this woman from when he was alive. And so they start recreating the like scene of the interaction that Hank used to have with this woman. So they recreate the bus. Isn't there like a, a dreamy version of like the Jurassic Park theme song that plays yes. around yeah. here to somewhere? <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Because there's Jurassic Park talk, isn't there? They mention it, like, earlier in the movie. And then he's... And then M- Manny's trying to remember the name of this woman, and he's mm-hmm. like, uh, Laura Dern. That's yeah. right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, when I watched it, I did not even connect those two. Oh yeah. <laughs> Jurassic Park theme is probably, like, the greatest theme. Iconic. Of all time. Oh, yeah. I'd say most people recognize it. If you don't know Jurassic Park, you, you don't, don't know, know shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be my tattoo. True. <laughs> <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're racking them up. All right, so we still got to figure out Colin's tattoo. So. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Probably not before the internet, no. every girl was special. I'm going to say you shouldn't do that no. one. No, thank Please you. Please don't do that I'll one. Just- this is yeah. like a fart butt. I feel like there's still some good lines in here. So yeah, we just get a lot more montages. Um, there is like a little reference to Weekend at Bernie's in there when he puts on the sunglasses and is being oh, walked yeah. down the aisle uh-huh. there. <laughs> and he legit looks so cool. He does look very cool. Uh, hell Has yeah, anyone he does. ever Who seen wouldn't... Weekend at Bernie's? I've actually never seen I've it. I've never seen it. <laughs> Yeah, no one's seen it. <laughs> Did anybody <laughs> see that movie? Uh, I, I feel like, I mean, it's referenced so often yeah. in just like the zeitgeist and pop culture or whatever. I, I feel like it must have been a big thing. And here's the thing about Weekend at Bernie's. It came out the year that I was born, and I am like five years older than Colin. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was an uh, old folks movie to me. <laughs> So probably was an old folks movie to me too. That's Maybe people like our I mean, parents. it's a classic concept. Yeah, but yeah. So only only Daniel Radcliffe can pull off looking like like a dead guy in busted sunglasses, but still just looking, <laughs> looking awesome. Super badass. Being dragged around. Yeah, he looked oh, tight. And, so good. And he had lines. Like he had some good pickup lines. Yeah, all the so they they're having like Hank dress up as the woman so that Daniel Radcliffe can like learn how to pick her up. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, he's like enacting a fantasy out through Daniel Radcliffe. Um and yeah, he's pulling some lines on this chick and they're falling in love, I would say. Oh, it's, it's really happening. <laughs> oh yeah. It's popping off on this uh, tree branch bus. Interesting <laughs> use of um, the term popping off because soon after this, we get the fake movie theater and the popcorn. Yay. <laughs> the, the best uh, song. The best song. Oh, 
Hell yeah. They make the fake movie theater and they <laughs> sing the popcorn song. <laughs> yep. And then Daniel Radcliffe chokes on the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> But that's how they figure out that he can be a little BB gun or whatever. Because <laughs> he's choking yeah. on the corn. Uh, he receives the Heimlich maneuver from Hank. And those those little corns just go shooting out everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's some great montages of him using him as a BB to, like, shooting down the lake and stuff. Just like... Just straight up shoots the head off of a raccoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was R.I.P. Yeah. <laughs> Little and they fella. make such they make such elaborate like camps throughout their little fun time. Um, yeah, really like wall decoration level. Yeah, it, it, it felt like to me it felt like kind of the last stand. Like in in terms of them making the movie, it felt like kind of the last stand of like that late two thousand style of like quirky indie movies like yeah it really reminded me of be kind rewind yeah like you like as the viewer you could almost suspend disbelief that like a couple people could put this together but it's also mm -hmm. so like you know movie creative wild whatever yeah 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 it, it added to the whimsy mm -hmm. of it all it did yeah there's times when like hank is coming out of their like house or whatever and he like opens a door that's made out of sticks mm. <laughs> um, to like come outside or whatever yeah it's it just gets so elaborate it's so it's really cool though i mean mm -hmm. yeah, just making all this out of trash that they find laying around that's cool when he comes out of the house they are drunk and they have a little tension moment where they near do they nearly kiss yeah, they, they nearly, nearly kiss. kiss. Yep, mm -hmm. we, we're not, so we're not at the kiss yet. Right. Uh. It gets a little we gotta, heated. We got to wait for there. it. Yeah. <laughs> got to get that will they, won't they going. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they keep using the cell phone to activate the boner compass. <laughs> They're going across the, um, what is it, like a pipe or something? What is the thing? Yeah, yeah like water pipe yeah. or whatever. Yeah, some kind of large piping. And they fall off and they almost drown. Um, but then they have a great scene underwater where <laughs> they almost drown, so they have a near-death experience. And then now they are they can be in love, so they kiss underwater. And then the greatest, we're above water, you see the cork float up top <laughs> right before they just shoot out of the water full cheeks in view <laughs> yep <laughs> And their faces yep. are like frozen in happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the cork float up first was just so. I died. It was so good. That wasn't Daniel Radcliffe's actual butt, but it was a cast of his actual butt. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> the <dir> <laughs> that sucks. The directors asked him if if it would be okay if they casted his butt, and uh, he was like, "Well, if you don't do my butt, I don't know what you'll be using. So I really want it to be my butt. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trust another butt. <laughs> I don't want to end up with a bad ass. <laughs> How embarrassing! <laughs> Why not go? I don't know." better then why not have like a really well i don't think it would be up to the actor i don't think it would be up to the actor that's what it comes down to it'd be no. up to the directors or like mm -hmm. whoever's doing posts so then you don't know who it could be anybody's yeah. butt yeah Ooh. <laughs> 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 the horror <laughs> i would hate that i know <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe is is fantasizing about his life with Mary Elizabeth Winstead when whenever he finds her again <laughs> it's like you know like we can be so close we can have all kinds of fun and she can ride my gas to wherever she wants to go <laughs> which is such yeah. a good, good great line she can ride my gas wherever she wants to go and that's Colin's tattoo so <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> so yeah then we get the lovers quarrels that start around here and where <laughs> like daniel radcliffe saying like you never fart in front of me like you just hold it in <laughs> 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 like that's what they're arguing about <laughs> like, well he's like yeah, yeah, yeah what else are you hiding yeah yeah well, plus i mean like manny is so exposed in every single way like he's he's sort of like he's vulnerable he's yes thank you yeah. he's extremely vulnerable yeah. but so he's just like i know you're 
sneaking off to like do secret stuff, but we're in the middle of nowhere. Like, what's your deal, man? Andy's observing yeah. everything, so he's also noticing the things that like he doesn't want him to see. Yeah. So yeah. they have this little quarrel about the farting, and then Hank goes to pee, and he finds a highway. So they're back near civilization. Yeah. And but then. A bear comes <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> as, you know, classically happens. They're pretty deep in the forest. Like, I could see it. They're pretty deep in the forest, but also next to a highway. Also next to a highway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems like a pretty, like, you know, foresty area. You know, bears are, like, snatching up kids all the time in areas like that, I think. All the time? <laughs> yeah, all the yeah, time. Bears are snatching up the kids. <laughs> yeah. How, how many bear uh, kids do we lose into bears annually? Sorry, I meant I meant picnic baskets. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terribly sorry. I was reading the statistic wrong. <laughs> now that seems that seems right. Okay. All right, now all right, that I cool. can get behind. Cool. <laughs> So this bear is tearing shit up, and through the chaos, Daniel Radcliffe happens to see Hank's phone, which has a pic of Mary Elizabeth Winstead and her new boyfriend on it, and could have always been her boyfriend, but I guess we don't really know. On the gram, baby. So yeah, yeah on Instagram. Can't believe that hasn't... Uh, <laughs> usually when they show some kind of technology in the movie... It's it's already not going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Instagram still has Netflix. Strong. And um, then they mentioned Netflix, too. They yeah. did. Like, all of the references still made sense. Yeah, you're right. Huh, interesting. <laughs> so, Daniel Radcliffe sees the picture of her with her new boyfriend, and he is horribly depressed <laughs> yeah. about the, seeing this picture. So, yeah, they get up in the tree. They're still having sort of an argument and this is where, like, Daniel Radcliffe is saying, like, if my best friend keeps his farts from me, then what else is he hiding from me? And why yeah. does that make me feel so alone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's beautiful. <laughs> I have heard, like, couples where, like, one person, like, refuses to fart in front of the other for, like, years and years. And I just truly don't understand. You're a manny in this situation. That's wild. Yeah. No, those people are weird, and if you're listening to this podcast, just let the two out. out. I mean, yeah. get real. It's, Watch, it's, not, yeah. it's not healthy to keep it in. Watch the flick. No. Learn a thing or two. <laughs> fart in front of your partner. It's fine. Constantly. It's not, healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy to keep it in. So do a big two, and then just say, hey, I'm healthy, baby. I'm letting it out. Uh, even freaking better, you can, like, prank your partner and see how many times you can, like, fart in their face. Oh. Or, like... <laughs> on them or like stink up the bathroom That's you know a good one. fart pranks yeah i have a friend who told me recently that for the first year that she was dating her boyfriend she would fart all the time and convince him that he farted and he believed her wow <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah that's a super we stand a true cuck <laughs> So, shout out, you know who you are if you're listening to this. <laughs> um, so, it Daniel Radcliffe's so depressed in the tree, and he starts having thoughts for the first time. And his thoughts are flashing inside of Hank's mind. Very, very Professor X, I'm just going to say, going with my superhero theory. Okay, okay. Oh. <laughs> yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, they're kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of, like, why do you keep living? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, Dan Rack was pretty much suicidal. And, yeah, Hank was just like, there was always just some thought, like one thought that was beautiful enough to keep me going. Uh, and then he instantly falls out of the tree and gets ate by the bear. <laughs> 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 and uh, Daniel Radcliffe has all these memories of them being chill together. And uh, crinkles back to life. Really horror movie shit going on back there. <laughs> and saves him from the bear. Lights himself on fire. 
saves him from the bear. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. This is more like really fun, like body acting by Daniel Radcliffe. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's got to kind of at the same time pretend to be dead, but also be a uh, like very motivated dead person that's sa- trying to save his friend. It's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Mm-hmm. It is a lot. And that just speaks to his damn genius so here. Good. Mm-hmm. He's, he's <laughs> fucking great. Hell yeah. So when Hank wakes up, uh, he is now being carried by Daniel Radcliffe, where it's been the other way around for most of the movie. And mm-hmm. they're at uh, Elizabeth Winstead house. What happens? Her daughter's in the yard. And they go up and uh, start talking to her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Manny tries to show her some of his uh, special skills. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Those skills are maybe not things that childs should see. No, nope. nope. I, I do feel like Hank appropriately like kind of slaps him away and is like, nope, don't do yeah. it. Nope, nope. Uh, yeah. Right before this, uh, or like right before they start talking to the little girl, Hank is trying to convince... Manny not to go and talk to the little girl because people will think he's weird or ugly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, Manny says, maybe everyone's a little bit ugly and all it takes is just one person to be okay with it and then we'll all be dancing and singing and farting and we'll all be a little less alone. Now isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever heard? (laughs) There you go. That's great. I love that. But then he talks to the little girl realizes he's weird and he dies. (laughs) So... <laughs> R.I.P. Then Elizabeth Winstead comes out of the house to a strange scene with a dead man <laughs> and a guy with oh, yeah. a broken leg uh, talking to her small child. Uh, all the cops come. Initially, they think that the phone belonged to Manny yeah. because it was on, on his person, but... Uh, you know, it gets revealed that it didn't belong to Manny. And Hank's just getting more and more upset at, like, like they're just going to take his body away and, like, throw him in a morgue in an unmarked grave or, you know, whatever. Mm. Yeah. And uh, they're in love, so he's not just going to let that happen. So he takes a dead corpse and runs. <laughs> and <laughs> It's really... Mary, Mary Elizabeth Winstead also finds out at this time that, like, Paul Dano... Has been like creeping all he's over a cre- her. He's a total creep. Even- yeah. yeah, he he that it- that like phone like home screen or what lock screen picture of her. Yeah. he just he just snuck a pic of her on the bus. Yeah, a follow up to how he's just a total creep. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it really, it's those subtle like moments earlier in the movie that have this payoff at the end where it's like, yeah, he's uh he's a little non consensual picture taker. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like being exposed now so like her family is there his dad is there the media it's fucking is there wild. like yeah. everyone is there i i kind of like this scene because i feel like it like the whole rest of the movie it, it's sort of one it's one movie and then they just pop out into this person's front lawn and then it just feels not only does it to me kind of feels like a totally different movie but it's also just yeah. kind of shot in a way that i think is supposed to be really disorienting and like i i just every like so we watched it in the theater and then twice um getting ready for this and like every time yeah. i just felt like kind of uncomfortable like it just feels like really unsettling just the pacing of it and like yeah. The reporter is like talking very awkwardly, but I think it's intentional where she's like, mm-hmm. we're trying to interview you. It's like weird. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, it's, it is meant to like shock you out of where you've been for the rest of the mm-hmm. movie because you've been living in this like magical, like kind of realm. I mean, it's like a different Absolutely. planet. Yeah. And then you're shocked back into like, oh, actually, this guy is weird and he is just like fucking with a farting dead guy <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know <laughs> yeah and we're back in reality where people think things are weird <laughs> completely con- recontextualizes it right. yeah and it yeah. also feels kind of dreamlike in the way like why is the media there right. and there's like so much happening like all at once and it's sort of like disorienting and like that kind yeah, of feeling yeah. in a dream when you just feel kind of like confused or like like slow moving almost uh-huh. like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. 
Like he's been dissociating for the last however long. Who knows? We don't even yeah, know. who knows how but, but long? The, but when he's like mm-hmm. in reality, that's when it feels more like a dream than like right. this total fantasy world that he's been living in. Right. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah. So the end of this movie is pretty good. You okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we're sad. <laughs> now I'm a corpse. Um, so he takes the dead. <laughs> he takes the dead body and runs, and everyone follows him. So we're also kind of finding out that this whole. I mean. To the viewer, for all this time, it's looked like they're traveling miles and miles. They're going through hills, mountains, creeks, whatever. Um, but their entire camp is really just steps from this mm-hmm. chick's backyard. Right. And now everybody is seeing that. Like you said, everybody's there. The news, the cops, you know, her family, his family, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. so they're all seeing, like, all this crazy-ass <laughs> shit he's been doing. There's, like, bloody animal bones, like, posted <laughs> up on some wood <laughs> that spells words. It's, like, it's horrifying. Like, it's, like, some kind of cafe. So it's also, like, cute. It's, like, these, like, bones, yeah. but they're spelled, yeah. like, the something cafe. Which, if I can <laughs> if I can kind of ramble again, like, how I was saying that a lot of the earlier scenes remind me of, like, late 2000s movies and it's just like total like just deconstruction of that I don't know it like again just the way that like we're sort of now jarred back into reality and just like how unrealistic like those sorts of things are and if somebody were to like do that sort of stuff it's just like like a little out of this world I don't know yeah Yeah. the the reveal of the curtain or the pull of the curtain or whatever like showing that like the, the everything reveal of the curtain. Look at this curtain we got here. <laughs> I, um, I was like, I don't remember a curtain. <laughs> no, but like the pulling back, showing everything. Um, it's such a fucking jarring moment, and it like it, it I because I know when it happened, it took me a while. I kept thinking, I don't know if this is real because I don't. Yeah. You don't yeah. really know if the first hat. What like this movie completely, completely like never gives you a definite like what is the true reality yeah mm-hmm. and i i really appreciate that you know I, they, I they, appreciate yeah. that it fucking takes that risk the movie starts on an island and he rides a farting corpse off an island like they have a definitive shot of that yeah and mm-hmm. so it's like what like what is that is that uh, like is that hank's imagination like what like how does that actually happen if we're like if we're now back in the real world it sort of makes you question a lot yeah yeah but then at the end we get a little like re-injection of the magic Mm -hmm. um where (laughs) (laughs) he's like really trying to convince manny to come back to life and (laughs) he figures out that the only way to get manny back (laughs) is to do it to in front of manny (laughs) yeah and everybody and everyone yeah and everyone to really bear his soul by tooting in front of so many people. And I love when they do like the close up on the ass cheek and it's like rippling <laughs> before the tooth. <laughs> it's just like vibrating with the tooth that's inside of it. I mean, it's pretty powerful because they're standing like a distance away and they still seem to like. They can able smell to it. Smell they're gonna, it. They they're have, like, experience. a physical yeah. reaction to it. Powerful too. What is reality, though? You know. So, but they they let you think for a while, like, oh wow, like the magic isn't real. He is just a dead body. Everything's fucked up. This is so mm-hmm. weird. And it's like stretched out for like an uncomfortably long period of time <laughs> till he does the two. And even then, there's like another couple minutes of where he's just laying there lifeless and suddenly <laughs> uh, Manny's body starts just like absolutely vibrating going bonkers like, yep. <laughs> like a rumble like a around. rumble pack and a Nintendo 64 controller <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, then the toots come those big old toots that we yeah. know we know and love Manny for <laughs> and it's like He's having these outrageous, huge, like, nonstop toots. Everyone's watching, and they're just, like, 
straight faced, like dropping to their knees, like they've seen like the face of God or something. Like they're just like <laughs> I really, I really appreciate that they show uh, Hank's dad and the little kid laughing. Basically, like they're just yeah. they're losing it. <laughs> yeah, Hank's dad like finally looks kind of proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then. Um, he, everyone's brought to their knees by this like miracle and um you know manny just toots <laughs> off into the sunset <laughs> literally yeah and then we get a close up on his smile he's happy he's tooting off across the ocean into the sunset unbelievably <laughs> dramatic music is pumped in as this farting corpse is sailing off into the sunset and that's where i lose it every damn time <laughs> <laughs> Look, I laughed, I cried. It was incredible. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Hell, yeah. And also, just a little fun fact, um, Mary Elizabeth Winstead's last line on the film is is what the fuck. (laughs) And that's uh, the second time that the last line in a movie she's in has been what the fuck. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. That's just a fact. The other one was in 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, nice. That movie Um, fucking rules so hard. (laughs) I didn't like it, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, that's roll creds, man, on this yeah. film. What a great flick. I have to say. I, that's my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. I, You know, just watching this, I was like, I don't know how we're going to talk about this movie in a yeah. podcast. And, I mean, we're... We're doing a great job, y'all, but <laughs> yeah. I, I just, there's so much that it really feels like even more, like this would be like a three hour podcast if we let it, I feel like. It, if we really for dissected sure it. Could it. Be. Yeah. But it's so like, this movie is just such an experience, like fully an experience. Like it's a visual experience. Like totally. everything mm-hmm. looks cool. The sounds are like, you know, we've talked about the music is like its own thing. That's incredible. Like. It really is like something you go through, you know, like not not yeah. all movies are like that. Not even a, a lot of movies are like like it's very rare thing. Yeah, it's very special. We didn't even talk about the Cotton Eye Joe cover. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton The oh my god, that's why I've been seeing Cotton Eye Joe all day. Beautiful <laughs> cover. Oh, I fucking love that song. Another nerdy another nerdy note about the music is it's all uh like acoustic vocal hand claps. Like it's all like mm-hmm. um anything you can make with your body sounds. Yeah. And then once they oh. get to the like house and like back into reality, then they add like orchestral instruments. Oh, wow. I didn't notice mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I didn't either, but that's a cool fact. Yes. Hell yeah. And what a, yeah. It's just like how how many things they're doing with the body in the movie before the end. Yeah. And they yeah. do the, the, thing, the things with the body, with the sound, with the music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm broken again. I'm broken again. Um, <laughs> Watching a bunch of interviews with the cast about this movie, everybody wanted to ask them, what do you say to people who think this movie is, like, it makes them uncomfortable, like, because there's so much Uh. farting? (laughs) (laughs) Every person that interviewed them was asking them this question, like, what "What do you say to the haters who think this movie is weird because (laughs) there's farts? haters. (laughs) What a weird Ooh. question to Which keep is, asking people. Like, to me, I'm like, there's a lot more, like, significantly weirder stuff going on than just farting, too. Like, there's, yeah. like, they're, like, making mass... Yeah. We, we didn't get there, but they make a lot of masturbation jokes, and Manny has mm-hmm. a Tons. really good your mom joke, but it's in context. <laughs> it's it's actually, not a joke. It's like, but he's like I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna think about your mom when I masturbate. Uh, yeah, and I, I feel like if you've seen this movie... 
you understand that there's like such a deeper message than like just farts. Mm. So I thought those questions were kind of rude. I, in yeah. My opinion. yeah, it's like reducing it to like this one aspect. But like the purpose of the farts is like even in like moments that are so serious and like dark, there's still like the absurdity of life. Still got a fart. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's just like yeah. totally missing the point to only like... Th- to only see the fart jokes. <laughs> right. That's kind of what, like, Daniel Radcliffe, that's almost how he responded, was like, okay, well, if that's what they think, then they're kind of proving the point of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, the whole point is that these things that are, like, such human experiences that everyone has, like farting, like masturbating. Um, yeah. Some people look at those things and feel so uncomfortable. And, like, why is that when it's something that everybody... Does, it's unifying. You know? And, yeah. and yeah. if you're alone, you might not have those feelings. But, like, when you're a part of society, like, that's when you start to get these ideas that, like, these things are wrong or shameful. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what a flick. What a f- damn flick. I guess let's go around and we can rate this out of five. Kali, do you want to go first? This movie uh, gets a three for me. Uh, a three. I liked it. I didn't love it. I don't know. My, wow. my, I'm still, I'm still digesting it. To be c- completely honest, That's along fair. with those freaking blueberry pancakes. <laughs> no, those should have, those should have passed by now. Um, but yeah, I, I appreciated the message uh, and, and like the themes I really picked up on at the end, and like what this movie really had a, a potential to say. It just didn't, and this is, I don't know if this is, it's one of the criticisms, it's like, I don't know if it's a me problem or the movie problem. I just couldn't keep focused on it. It just didn't grab my attention, uh, which is shocking because I love farts and I love, like, body (laughs) humor. Uh, I believe I've farted on this recording. Uh, (laughs) We should all uh, sample our own farts and send them. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) Send them to you, Kayla, or whoever's editing this. It's me. Yeah. It's always me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three. Uh, all right. Uh, I disagree, but we'll carry on. Uh, Mary, do you want to go next? <laughs> yeah. So I think I'd give this movie like a uh, four and a half only because. All right. Now we're talking. <laughs> only because there's some things that I like kind of don't understand, but I feel like if like someone just had a theory or explained it to me like that could push me up to like a five so like there's just yeah. a couple like kind of unresolved things that I'm sort of like well is this supposed to mean something or not mean something or is it just like kind of thrown in sort of thing so like just the parts that are unresolved just knock off that little half point for me hmm. yeah but overall all right, like all right. overall I like love this movie and it's like just there's like so many layers to it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, like how the camera guy is like, "Hey, I know you," but that's it. Totally unresolved. Yeah, totally unresolved. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, I think yeah. I know you. Like, all right, cool. Um, Paul, what do you think? Out of five, solid five, absolutely. Hell yeah! I, um, Hell yeah! <laughs> all right, all right. I I really enjoy being weirded out by movies. Um, I prefer when it's like fun weirded out. I'll take any any form of being weirded out but uh this movie definitely hits that sweet spot of like you know no one's getting hurt in this movie even even mm-hmm. hank is like a creep and uh i like that that's like a um like a revelation but you know yeah. he's not like horrible he it does it's, it's not, not it's not malicious it's not revealed that he like did something fucked up um but so yeah. so you know no one's getting hurt in this movie we're all we're all mm-hmm. learning a lot we're all being very, I, I like I, any any form of media that disorients me is I just want I want more of it give me more and uh, yeah I think I think it's a really good message just overall um, I don't know I'm gonna try to not ramble and keep it short no yeah. it's fine <laughs> yeah that rules um, I would also give this a damn five out of five baby perfect in my opinion all right all right <laughs> I love this damn movie. It's like a it's like a rom com, but with body horror. And what can be better? That never happens. <laughs> when else have you seen that? <laughs> body horror, and it's not sexual body horror uh, in general. I, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't know. I love this damn movie. Uh, and 
Uh, it's uh, great to rewatch and rewatch, and this movie will live forever. It's probably on my favorite movies of all time. I'd have to say yeah. I mean, it's like a whole life philosophy. Dollar. It's incredible. <laughs> and I watched this movie when I had a really bad day, and then I watched this movie, and guess what? My day got a little bit hey. better. So, Hell uh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so I think it's safe to say we would all recommend that people watch this movie if you haven't watched oh, it. Can I, throw, oh, sure. can I throw in one more thing that we didn't cover? Uh, yeah. Another thing yeah. that this this really uh, adds to my five score is at least twice throughout the movie, he's like, you're like a multi-purpose tool guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so never actually having a titular line and pretty deliberately, <laughs> like, like completely missing the titular line, just edging on it. <laughs> yeah, because just a tip. <laughs> yeah, that right. Hell yeah! <laughs> and even the title's kind of a joke because they still don't say like a Swiss Army knife. Like at no right. point, Swiss Army yeah. man, mul- multi-purpose tool guy, but they're making you think it. Got, yeah. got your ass. Oh, yeah. What a great <laughs> flick. Man, that's, that's rocked. Now it's time for Scream Vomit. Yeah, baby. In this segment, we talk about stuff we've been watching that's not this movie that we're talking about. So, um, Colin... What have you been watching? I freaking saw Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Ooh. Nice. Wow. What a time to be watching that movie. <laughs> yeah, for the first time I saw it. Nice. And oh. um, I like its big Garden State energy. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. They were probably around the same time, were it they? It must have been before Garden State. You think so? I don't know. I think, oh. I'm just guessing. No? I think they're both 04. Oh. oh. I'm going to I'm going to stake my li- Yeah, they're both 04. Whoa. I'm a I'm a genius. Wow. <laughs> what a yeah, time I to be so. alive. And mm-hmm. I can say I was a little underwhelmed by it. I think it got overhyped with all the talking. Mm-hmm. But it was good. It was good. Seeing it 20 years later probably has a little different of an effect, I would guess. I've never rewatched it because I was so depressed by it the first time. Well. <laughs> 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 but yeah, other than that, I just I'm just watching a lot of a lot of Japanese deathmatch wrestling, you nice. know. A lot of big Japan and I love it. Hell yeah. Mary uh, or either of you, I, you're probably watching the same yeah, things. I'm mostly watching the same mostly, things. but we have different okay. motivations for what we're watching. So, <laughs> okay. We just we just finished the first two seasons of Dead to Me. Okay. I watched the first season of that. I haven't watched the second yeah, so, season. Uh, Christina Applegate and Linda Cardinelli. Um uh-huh. I like I so I had already seen the first season and then when they released the second season, I got Paul to rewatch it with me, probably only because we're in the quarantine. Quarantine watch. <laughs> But yeah. I really enjoyed it. I love all the like dialogue between women just feels like really authentic and like it's really funny and then it also has like really like sad dramatic moments and I like I like a little of both in my uh entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. so we've been watching that. We've been rewatching Angel. Uh nice. yes. Ooh. I'll uh, I'll talk about <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll uh, talk about Lucha Underground. We've been rewatching mm. that. I've been really, oh, hell really yeah. into that. It's it, and so uh, I think we're maybe ten episodes in, and it's just oh, so good. I like my favorite thing about it. I think is I can't think of any other like maybe wrestling society x i can't think of another successful and like well done wrestling promotion where you get to actually start from the very beginning like if you tried to watch if you try and watch Mm -hmm. w like let's go back and rewatch wwe yeah like it doesn't it doesn't work um so yeah lucha underground's been really fun because it just it's like a real tv show that you get to chill out and yeah there's more like storyline like kind of like a soap opera narrative going on in lucha 
Lucha Underground too, yeah, right? Yeah, and so, yeah, just sort of yeah. watching, the like, the beginning. The little baby Pentagon, nobody respects him. Nobody respects yeah. Pentagon Jr., and they better <laughs> learn some damn respect. Coming of age story <laughs> yeah, for Pentagon Jr. Yeah, yeah, so good. So that's that's my number one pick for uh, for what I've been watching recently. Oh, that and Degrassi, yeah. The Next Generation. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I love Degrassi. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do own eight seasons of Degrassi Next Jesus. Generation on DVD, wow. plus a, bo- right. <laughs> plus a bonus right. two-episode special of Jay and Silent Bob do Degrassi. Oh. <laughs> oh. Really, really a strange couple of episodes in uh. retrospect, not going to lie. Uh, yeah, those episodes are completely inappropriate. Not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I freaking love Degrassi. I, I mean, I watched that, you know, like when I was in high Same. school and that never stopped. I mean, I rewatch it every once in a while. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. Great show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've also watched the one that's on, whatever one of Degrassi's on Netflix was actually, yeah, whatever one of Degrassi's on Netflix is, I think, the first time I ever saw a non-binary character in a show oh. in my life. Mm. And... It was great, and I did cry. Nice. Aww. So that was awesome. That makes sense. The new yeah. class. That's yeah, cool. yeah, we're working our way up to uh, the the series that's on Netflix. Where, what season are you on now? Thirteen. Wow, <laughs> up there. Yeah, I mean, there's not that much. Is it? Not that much between there and the one on Netflix. Yeah, is I there? think it's only. Is thirteen the last I one? I think fourteen is the last one, and then we'll be. Fourteen. Then we'll be live. Sick. <laughs> What have you been watching? I've been watching. Um, last episode, we talked. To, I talked about I was watching Little Fires Everywhere. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I watched that, too. too. Actually, I watched it and I read the book. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Um, yeah, so last episode, I had just started it, but now I've finished it. And um, big freaking payoff. I loved the end of that series yeah. season series i don't know i don't think they're probably not going to do a season two are they i don't do you think? i don't think they so should. and the way that the series ends is different from the book and i think it's like more satisfactory than the book like they really? resolve more things yeah uh, yeah i loved the ending of the show um i was the beginning like first couple episodes i was like not entirely sold, but I was like, that's well, entertaining enough. I'll keep watching. There's a little mm-hmm. bit of mystery. Um, but yeah, it just escalated so high uh, without spoiling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just really love the show. And Reese Witherspoon in the damn finale was so good. Totally. Yeah. Hell yeah. She needs a damn Oscar. Um, so I watched that. And then I, I also watched um, Barry on oh. HBO. Hell yeah. Which I'd never watched before. I've, I've never heard of it. It's never heard of it. Oh. I've heard Super of it, good. but never seen it. Wait, Colin, you've not seen it either? I have had like so many false starts with it. I just need to buckle down and do it. But Oh my dang gosh. <laughs> What's the guy's name? Bill Hader. <sighs> it's yeah. Bill Hader. He plays a hitman who's trying to like get out of the hitman life uh, because he discovers he wants to be an actor. Um, it's like... A dark comedy, I would say, but like yeah. very dark, com- very dark comedy. <laughs> and it's pretty quick watch. Like if there's only two seasons, they're eight episodes each and they're like 20 minute episodes. So I really flew through it. I watched this whole series in like two days. Yeah, that was a great show. And can't wait for more of that. Everybody on the show is great. Nice. nice. Hell yeah. All right. That's pretty much what I've been watching. So if we're all wrapped up there. Then we can move on to plugs. Wow. <laughs> Yay. Um, what do y'all two have to plug? You have some things going on. Oh, me? No, I have nothing going on. Paul, Paul has stuff going on. <laughs> I, honestly, like... Mary was previously in a... Had a podcast with former guest Gooey. True. Called oh. Existence is Futile. That's a good podcast that do you want to um give a give a description Good listen. yeah so we rewatched the first season of star trek the next generation hell yeah and they did like an episode by episode Epis- yeah uh, episode by episode like recap yeah that was a good podcast <laughs> thanks <laughs> yeah so that's there uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i've been uh i've been working on music stuff uh so i've got a project called becoming rats where mm-hmm. I'm just uh, going in the basement if I'm bored enough, 
put, pulling out my iPhone, hitting the record button, and just recording weird sounds and just improvising stuff. And if it sounds good, it's a track. Hell yeah. So that rolls. doing that. And then uh, me and uh, another friend of mine who um, runs a zine library, uh, she and I are going to be putting together a must-see TV night on Zoom. Or we, we're planning it. Ooh. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do like basically like script reading. But we're gonna do an episode of Seinfeld, and uh, she's putting together an episode of The Office. Uh, and I guess we're gonna do it all at once. We haven't we haven't hammered out all the details yet, but uh, I uh, tapped the very host of this podcast, Kayla Bates, <laughs> for 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 a role in this. I'm very excited. I will also be yeah, I'm excited performing. Too. Mary, yes, Mary, Mary as the lead, Jerry Seinfeld. Oh hell well, yeah! I mean, I've got two leads because I think I'm also going to be Pam. Whoa! <laughs> so I guess that's the thing I'm wow. doing. That's going to be great. Paul, are you going to be like you're in it? I'm too, George, baby. What? You're George. Okay, cool. That rocks. <laughs>